Uh, so today, uh, Gio and myself are here at White House Machine Tools looking at this uh, bundle deal which is available on this wheelie machine here. Uh, everything you see here is actually available as a package. Now, I'm with Gio and one of the, the, the points we're going to talk about now is the work hold in which Gio's expertise lays firmly in in his roots. Um, Gio, this microlock system here, this is quite a big base plate. Often I see them uh, the kit 75 is quite a lot smaller than this, but this just shows that some companies do try and fill the table. Absolutely. And why I, would they? Well, I think with this particular model, the 1265, it's got a 650 mil y-axis stroke and a 1200 mil x-axis stroke. This is quite a large envelope um, for a free axis machine tool. Now, what is the point of having all of that stroke if you're not utilizing that envelope? And that is exactly what this microlock system is doing. On so many occasions, you'll go to an end user company when they've got a machine such as this, and you'll see one single station vice in the middle of the table, and I just look at it and I think, what a waste. They, what they've done here effectively is they've put a bundle package together, a generic bundle package, which is ultimately so flexible. These microlock units can be manoeuvred to anywhere across this grid plate. So ultimately, you could move them right in the centre and hold, as an example, a 100 mil square prismatic billet, or you could put them to the extremities of the grid plate to hold an extremely large component or even multiple components and add more clamps. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be slightly controversial here and play devil's advocate because I'm sure a lot of people watching this are going to go, well, this is quite an expensive system. I mean, look at the machining that's gone into this, the grinding of the base plate. You know, th th there's a lot of engineering in here. OK, you're going to get the, you know, the optimum in repeatable precision and, the, and I suppose the speed of moving the, the devices around. But what I suppose I'm getting at is, it, is it a costly system and something that you might think actually I can get away with a vice? I'll play devil's advocate too. So if I was an end user and I didn't know what work I was uh, that was going to come through the door day to day, this is perfect because it accommodates for any potential scenario that I may have. And when I say that, you can even get soft jaws for this, so you can even hold round work, round work as well as prismatic work. If I was an end user and I knew that I was going to be doing the same work day in, day out, high volume, I could buy more stops and, and clamps and accommodate for maybe several, several components, 10 components, dependent on the size of them components. So again, it, it, it's so, so versatile. So where's my return though? Where, you know, when, you, when you start looking at return on investment on something like this, it's got to be measured against something. So are we saying it's down to the, the time saving of, uh, over a period of time of changing parts and moving parts around? Is that the key? The return of investment is, say for example, um, you, you add a component and you were doing it in a single station vice one at a time and it was six up work and you had to keep changing it. Um, you know, there's six different setups. You could effectively have all of your setups and accommodate for all of your setups you know, in, in six different stages. If it was just two op work, you could set up again lots of different two op work there. So the spindle is running for longer. There's less setups. You can accommodate for more components. You can present more components to the spindle at one given time. But not only that, so if then for whatever reason, as a subcontractor, you just don't know what's around the corner. If you're buying the machine with this kind of envelope, the next day you might be given a component that is a meter by 500 in size. And that is not a problem. You can accommodate for that too. So you've got that flexibility. That is massive because you'd have to buy lots of different work holding solutions to accommodate for all of these different scenarios. But, but what about my speed of set? If I'm going to be putting moving parts, setting a part that's here, down to here, to here, how am I going to find the datum points? What's the, you know, you can set universal datum points from this. So effectively, once you've put your end stops with the micro lock system what in a certain... These, these. Yes, yeah. once you've put them into a certain position, they then become your datum point, a fixed datum point. The clamps then, you've got a certain amount of stroke on the clamps. So, so what you're saying is you know where that face is exactly. straight away. And then you've got the other stop here on this side for your Y stop. So one, one stop, will be your X stop and your Y stop is built in at that, that, that end. So you, you, your datum points, you'll set them. So once you've set it, moving these from one setup to another, again, is extremely fast. It's a case of just undoing the cap head and repositioning the stops and the clamps. What, what about getting this on the table though? Is that, how, how, do, how do I get this on the table? How do I know what position this is in? Once this is mounted to the table, well, firstly, you've got to choose what size you want. What coverage do I want? And obviously, 
you'd want to be able to cover as much as possible. On this particular scenario, they've kept off the right-hand side so they can accommodate for a four-axis rotor table, which gives you even more flexibility if required. But once you've chosen the coverage of the faceplate, then it's a case of knowing you know, wh wh where you want it to, to be able to, to kind of accommodate for as many, you know, to utilize your Y and your X axis. Um, I, I get all these points. This one here, I was going to say, these spacers, these are put on there, I assume, then for the part to sit on top of. But look, look at that clamping area. There's not much clamping area there. Is that going to give me sufficient force to be able to hold a part? Absolutely. So, yeah, there's lots of different scenarios. Is it like a pull down method? No, this particular solution is there is pull down uh, forces within the micro lock, but for, I wouldn't necessarily associate it with pull down, albeit you do get that pull down. Uh, there, there is a pull down mechanism within the micro lock. That's just a, a kind of a, a parallel, just to kind of say, right, I only want to hold it. I'd say that's more for maybe second up work I don't, I don't i don't know because i suppose you know the height of that too so you again that helps you with your datum setting it gives you a lot of flexibility i think you can even maybe put serrations in i'm not 100 percent sure but uh, definitely get in contact with micro lock to find that out but there's lots of different variations like i mentioned soft jaws step jaws whatever jaws you you will want and and one testament to micro lock i actually went to the the facility where they were making the micro lock base plate and it was on an horizontal, and they were making a microlock base plate a lot larger than this, presented to the spindle in a, in a horizontal plane, and they were only using two microlock clamps. So that's testament to the camping force, and they weren't holding on much more than what they're holding on there. And, and I think what you can see here is an example of it on a VMC, but these are great in cube format as well, aren't they? Onto a horizontal machining centre, again, presenting more parts to the spindle. Flexibility. In, flexibility. That's all I can say is flexibility, accuracy, clamping force, versatility, and presenting more components to the spindle. You've got everything that you need.